In today's video, I'm going to give you guys an in-depth overview of Roblox Studio. I'll be showing you guys how to maneuver Studio, use the tools, and explain the contents of the Explorer tab. Alright, the first thing we need to do is create a new place. We can do that by clicking the Roblox Studio app. From there, click New in the top left, and select Base Plate. You can move by using the W, S, A, and D keys. Hold right click and move your mouse to turn your camera. Place your pointer over an object and left click to select it. Now that you know the basic controls to move around a studio, it's time to get into the tools at the top of your screen. The copy tool lets you copy anything from a script to a model. You can then use the paste tool to insert the instance you copied. The keybind is Control C for copy and Control and P for paste. The cut tool lets you delete instances while at the same time it saves them to your clipboard, which you can then paste later on. The keybind is Control and X. The duplicate tool clones the selected instance as well as all of the instance's properties. The keybind is Control and D. The select tool lets you select objects in the workspace. You can still access the other parts of Studio if you have the tool disabled. As you guys can see, I can't access the part anymore, but I can still access other things in Studio aside from, aside from anything in the workspace. But then when I select it, then I'm actually able to select things. You can still access the other parts of Studio if you have the tool disabled. The keybind is Control and 1. You are able to move objects just by using the Select tool. However, a better tool for moving them would be the Move tool. The Move tool gives you arrows to ensure your part is moved exactly where you want it. The keybind is Control and 2. The Scale tool lets you change the size of a part. Simply hold left click while hovering over one of the dots and move your mouse to change the size. The keybind is Control and 3. The rotate tool lets you rotate objects until you get your desired orientation. The keybind is Control and 4. Collisions, collisions is as the name implies, a setting that if enabled does not allow parts to go through each other. Let me show you guys what that would look like. So if I had these two spawns, right? And if I were to enable collisions, the part would not go through. As you guys can see, the part will not go through it. It will not go through. It'll like teleport it. It'll like kind of like teleport it through. If I disable collisions, however, it'll kind of like kind of go more through it, if that makes sense. It'll kind of actually literally go through the part, if that makes sense. Or if I move it, rather, I should say. Yeah, if I move it, then it'll go through. If I turn... If I enable collisions, see, it's kind of like a brick wall. Like, it just won't let me move it through. If I disable it, it goes through. Yeah, sorry, I meant to use the move tool, that example. Join surfaces when enabled will automatically create a weld in new parts. A weld is sort of like an invisible rope that ties parts together. So if I enable join surfaces, and then if I was to create a new part, right, it would automatically have a weld here. And then you can't see the weld, but you can weld, you can weld part, different parts together. A weld is sort of like an invisible rope that ties multiple parts together. The editor or terrain builder is a tool that lets you generate, import, or clear terrain. Once you've selected your desired settings, you can then click generate. Region and edit have useful tools that can help you customize your terrain. Pretty much the same as like up here when you're messing around with parts, but this is what you would use to edit around different terrain and just change it to however you want it to look. One region and edit have useful tools that can help you customize your terrain as well as do other things. The toolbox has models, plugins, audio, and more that you can add to your place to use in your game. Be careful though, some free models may contain viruses. So if you haven't heard already, 
definitely be careful when you're on the when you're in the toolbox or in the marketplace because any of these models could really have viruses that could mess with your game possibly even get your game taken down especially if you don't know how to if you don't understand lua like the scripting language you don't understand what's in, what's on the scripts definitely be careful when you're using models and stuff now obviously if the model doesn't have a script it's a less chance of it being any type of threat but just still be careful when using free models but yeah you guys have like a lot to choose from you get vehicles buildings um admin commands weapons vehicles scripts like a whole bunch of things and it's a whole lot of stuff to choose from so definitely check out the toolbox you can view any assets you own by selecting the second button here's where you would view you see my models it would view my plugins literally everything all of this stuff is everything you own or not necessarily like you made but just generally you own i guess is a better way to put it you can access assets you've recently added to your place by clicking on the clock this is anything you've recently inserted to your place this is pretty much more so things you got from the marketplace that you didn't that you didn't like publish and stuff this is pretty much other people's things that you that you just insert into your place you can click you can access assets you've published to Roblox by clicking on the light bulb. Now these are these are assets you've actually created yourself, or necessary, or rather you published yourself. But you but it should really just be stuff you created though for the most part. You can click part to insert either a block, spear, wedge, corner wedge, or cylinder. As you guys saw me already do earlier in the video, how I inserted a part. You can insert different types of parts you just selected, or you select it like this, whatever the, the current part is selected, it'll spawn that part when you just click the top. You can access the UI menu by clicking on the UI button. UI stands for user interface and main menu is an example of UI. If you guys don't know what UI is like, you know when you join the game and it's like, it says play, settings, update log, that is UI. Or say if like you just completed a quest and like, a bar just loaded on your, like a bar just slid on your screen and it was like congratulations you've completed the quest you've earned 200 cash 500 xp that is ui those are examples of ui import 3d allows you import 3d lets you import 3d models files from software like blender you wouldn't really have to worry about this since you guys are well you guys should be new to roblox studio blender is a 3d it's a 3d modeling software where you can just make 3d models and stuff that's what people make the really nice looking like attacks for fighting games and just generally cool looking effects the material manager lets you change the material of any part experiment with new materials and combine them and to be honest with y'all i don't really know much about this but you but yeah as i said you can just you can change the materials you can mess around find whatever material you like this is definitely a builder's tool i am a scripter myself so so maybe if any builders in the comments would would you know put any other uses for it then they could do that the color option is the default color of any part you create if you want the parts you create to be red you would select the color red so as you guys can see, with everything I've spawned in so far, it's all the same color. It's all this, I think it's, yeah, medium stone gray. But if I were to change the color to, you know, like a bright red, and if I were to insert a part, you see, like, the color starts off as really red. That's the default color, right? The group option lets you group parts together. It creates one giant model. So to group parts together, you would select multiple parts by holding down control. And then you would you would press Control and G, or you could right click. You could right click while both of them are selected, and you could oh yeah, group as a model. You can either group it as a model or a folder. Completely up to y'all. But as you guys can see, the key bind is Control and G right here. And then when you do group it together, you would see it like this. It would appear as a model, and they would both be children of it. The lock option makes it so that you're unable to click on a part. This is useful for when you're building. So say like you're building a house, right? But you're trying to work on a specific part of the house. You finish the floor, but you're trying to work on like making, I don't know, carpet. Yeah, like carpet and chairs, but you accidentally keep clicking like this certain part that's like right here. Like say if I was trying to get this little part right here, right? But I keep accidentally clicking the spawn location because it's right there. If I were to go into the properties and lock it, however, you see, I can't click it anymore. I can select everything else, but I can't click it anymore. So it's very useful for people who are generally just trying to access a certain part. 
and stuff like when especially when you're building definitely very useful the anchor apart that mean the anchor apart means that it can be it can't be moved while the game is running unless its properties are changed via a script okay to kind of explain this right if i were to anchor this part right if i anchor this part now obviously i can still move it with the you know the studio editor and stuff but if i were to join the game and if i were to try to move it like walk into it it would not move at all the only way this part would move is if i had a script that was to, a script that changed its properties that changed its property like that changed its position c frame orientation or if i disabled um its anchored property if it's not anchored then it'd be able then like players would be able to like walk into it walk into it and move it and stuff you know like real life as you would be able to so it's kind of like more realistic in real life there are three different types of testing. Play simply starts up a studio test server. So if I click play, you guys will see my character load in. And this is a test server. Yeah, right here, there's my character. Then I spawn in and stuff. Then you have play here. Play here does the same thing, but spawns you at your current position. So say if you want to test something for your game, right? But like you have like a really big map and you want to test something in a certain position, like literally you just want to go in real quick, see if this works then you would do play here by, by using the drop down menu and you would it would work the same as the first option but you would spawn exactly where like your camera was before, right before you click play here lastly run doesn't spawn in your character you're simply testing from the server side of the game so if you were to select run you wouldn't spawn in as you can tell it's definitely it's it's faster because you're not loading in your character all you're doing is just testing on the server side it's almost as if you're testing your game without any actual players in the game if that makes sense it's really it's really more so just to test like scripts that test any scripts that you want to run that don't require players to actually do anything resume would enable the test if you were to pause it and clicking stop would end the test i'll talk about testing in either part three or part four i'll go more in depth and show you guys the test section later on Game settings is, is where you can enable or disable settings for your game. I'll, I'll explain this entire section in a later video. Don't worry, I will cover that those portions of the settings later on. You can click team test to start a test with other developers in studio with you. Clicking exit would end the team test. So team testing is where you team test with other developers and stuff. Um, kind of in real, yeah, actually, yeah, in real time, you guys can team test and stuff on different devices. But y'all would all be like kind of in the same studio server. You would have to enable a thing called Team Create, which if you don't know, Team Create is pretty much where you're able to edit a place, but not just you're the only one editing. There's other developers editing. Other people have access and stuff. So I have a video that shows how to enable that if you're interested in that, which I'm pretty sure most of you are because a lot of people prefer to develop with their friends rather than be a solo dev. But... <laughs> All right, guys, we've officially went through all of the home options. It's time to explain the Explorer tab. I know I dropped a lot of you guys, so take a break if you need to. If not, let's get back to it. All right, so we have the Explorer tab. If you didn't, if you couldn't tell, this is the Explorer tab. All of this is the Explorer tab because it's Explorer at the top. The Explorer tab is comprised of services. Each serves, each service serves its own purpose. All of these are services. The workspace, as many of you can already tell, is where your parts go. The workspace is essentially the map that the player is walking through. So the workspace has definitely, it's one of the most useful services because, you know, this is where you put your parts, your models and everything. This is what the player sees in terms of like parts and stuff, not UI stuff. You know, here's where the player's camera is, the terrain and stuff. Your map would be in the workspace, right? And then plus there are some settings with workspace like under properties that you could change like with gravity wind definitely stuff to check out on your own time then we have the player service the player service displays all players currently in a server it's empty right now because i'm not testing that's why it is empty but if i were to click play you guys will see my name pop up yep right there and as you guys can see uh I don't know why my player didn't load in, but that, that is, it doesn't matter. But anyway, as you guys can see, this is my player. I've loaded in right here. So all the players would pretty much be under this service. 
the lighting service lets you change the time of day, the colors of the sky, and any other change to the visual aspects of the game. So if you're trying to change like the aesthetic to your game, you want that maybe sky to be darker, you want to change the backdrop from, from the regular Roblox default, you want to change how far the sun is, how big the sun is, how the moon and all that stuff, you would go to lighting, you would change, you would just play around with these settings until you get, you know, you get what you want stuff it's really like it's really like you just you play around with lighting for like five minutes you understand how to do this how to do that then the material service the material service simply saves if whether or not you want to use a specific material to be completely honest with y'all there's like the one service i don't really understand because again this is like a service for like builders because i don't build i script but i do understand obviously everything else but yeah this it, it appears to me like you just it's kind of like just you just you're pretty much saying whether or not like Yes, I want to use this material or not and stuff. But yeah, you wouldn't really have to change anything here or use this at all. It's just kind of there and stuff. If anyone has any uses for it, let me know in the comments. I'd be interested to know. Moving on to Replicated First. Replicated First is the first thing that runs for the player upon them joining. You would place loading scripts in inside the service. So as the name implies, Replicated First. So... A little tip when you see the word replicated replicated usually refers to server and local side the reason why they use the word replicated is because you're replicating something on the server as well as the local side the difference between the two is the server side is where scripts are running for the entire server all of the players and like the overall game itself while the local side is the client side in other, in other words the player side was going off with the players and stuff it's replicating itself because it's replicating like from server to client or from client to server in other words if a change is happening on the server side it's happening to the client side but that's assuming that that's what the script is doing if that makes sense replicated storage and server storage are very similar they both store things that can later be accessed by scripts the main difference is that replicated storage can be accessed by both the client client again is equal to player and server while server storage can only be accessed by the scripts that run on the server. The safer option is to use server storage as it's more secure as exporters wouldn't be able to access anything you're storing there. Okay, so to kind of explain this, right? So exploiters. Exploiters are able to access local scripts, um, remote events if they're on local scripts, and they're able to access things like in replicated storage. So say if you had like, I don't know, like if you have a fighting game and you have like your abilities or weapons in replicated storage, you clone them over from replicated storage and give them to the player, an exploiter could access those. So the safer option would be to keep it in server storage because the only things that can access the server storage would be server scripts and exploiters can't access server scripts. This is, this is literally just not possible. To my knowledge, at least it's not possible, but obviously I just know that it's much safer to go with server storage. Server script services where you would place server scripts such as leader stats, admin commands, and etc. Leader stats, in other words, like data saving. You would put only server scripts or module scripts as well. But I'll, I'll get into that later on. You would ne you would never put no local scripts here because they wouldn't work. That's why you don't see it as an option. Starter GUI is where you would place GUI that the player should automatically have upon joining the game. If you don't know what a GUI is. Uh, UI, I explained it earlier and stuff, but UI, you know, it's like, it's like a main menu screen, for example. If I put a frame right here, this should look, this should look familiar to you guys. Or if I put a text button, that should look familiar to you guys, right? That's a screen GUI. Starter pack is where you would place tools that the player should automatically have upon joining the game. So y'all know when y'all join the game, right? Now, just, just a little word of advice, or not word of advice, kind of like a, just a heads up. Some games do use custom hotbars. Now, in some other games, use the regular default Roblox, like, uh, hotbar. And hotbar is the, you know, the one, two, three, like, the numbers with all your tools and stuff, right? You would put all your tools in starter pack. And, and those are the tools that the players will start with when they join the game. Starter player is broken up into two different sections. You know, we have starter player scripts and starter character scripts. If you place a script in starter player scripts, it will be parented to the player. The vice versa applies to scripts in characters, in starter character scripts. So pretty much, if you want a script that runs as soon as the player's character has finished loading, you would put it here. If you want, it, if you want a script that runs when the player has loaded in, you would put it here. So say if you have like a script that you want to run like UI or like user input, you could just use, you could just put in starter player. But if you want something like 
let me think like you want like every time the character every time the player's character jumps this happened you would put it in starter character because you'd want it to be when the character has loaded in because the scripts can only work once the character has loaded in in starter character scripts some of you may not see the team service if you don't see it click view at the top of your screen and click the second icon in the third row to open the command prompt from there type game colon get service parentheses quotation marks teams and press enter so you guys this real quick game colon get service teams and then enter right it doesn't matter because i already have it as you guys can see i have it right here but if you didn't have it it should now it should now pop up you should now see the team service the team service stores all of the teams in the game you can have as many teams as you want feel free to customize their properties to your heart's content you would simply add a team by just typing in team you just add your team and then just change the color auto assignable and just change it from there the sound service can be used to store audio that you plan to use in your game it's pretty self-explanatory you just insert a sound here then you would just put your sound id and you would use the sounds last but not least the text chat service there's not really much to do with the service aside from changing the properties if that's what you want to do it's not really much like you can configure yeah you can configure it and stuff i mean it definitely is of interest to some people but i haven't personally really touched it honestly but whew, okay i know it is a lot on you guys my brain honestly hurts and i already know all this too which is honestly crazy but as you guys can see i only covered a few things from studio there's still much more to learn about if the video was helpful leave a like and consider subscribing for more tutorials leave a comment down below if i should drop a part two if you want access to my scripts models and more you can become a channel member by clicking join next to the subscribe button thank you guys for watching and i'll see y'all in the next video